Good day. In this video, we're going to explain equations with exponents without using substitute with k. If you know how these two equations work, you don't have to look at the rest of the video. This is for grade 11 and older. Before we start, please remember, if there's anything in school mathematics that you're not sure about, you can WhatsApp us with a WhatsApp photo of your problem to this number. Then we will try and solve your problem and send back an answer to you for free as soon as possible. First, we're going to look at some pre-knowledge that you must get your brain around. You know that if you have to factorize this binomial, you can break it up into two brackets with an x and an x there, and a 2 and a 2 at the back, and a plus and a minus in the middle. Now, the question is, why is this so? If you times this x with that x, you're going to get x squared, but why? Because there's a 1 in the air and a 1 in the air, and your bases are the same, you're going to add the two exponents. 1 plus 1 is going to give you that too. The same way we can now factorize this binomial. We still write two brackets. We put the minus 2 and the plus 2 at the back. I think you can understand that. Then we put an x in the beginning here, but we need something in the air here that if I add them, I must get back to a 1 in the air there. And that'll be x to the half times x to the half will get us back to x to the power of 1. Please stop the video and get your brain around that. I also assume that you understand how to factorize this trinomial. You put two sets of brackets, an x in the beginning, a 2 and a 3 there, and because there's a minus, I'm going to put a plus and a minus, and the biggest one will get the plus. I hope you understand this, but again, why is that an x and an x gets us back to an x squared? Because there's a 1 in the air and a 1 in the air, and x to the power of 1 times x to the power of 1, I'm going to add it to 1, so I get that 2 over there. If you time this out, x times x will give me x squared, x times 3 will give me plus 3x to the 1, minus 2 times x minus 2x to the 1, and minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. The same way if we get this trinomial now. It looks unfamiliar, but let's see what happens. We have to put an x here and an x here to get us back to x to the power of 1. I need something in the air that if I times them and I add those two, I will get a 1. And that will be a half in the air, so x to the half times x to the half will give me back to x to the power of 1 because I'm going to add the half and the half. If you times that x to the power of half to x to the power of half, you're going to get x to the power of 1. x to the power of half times plus 3 is plus 3x to the half. Minus 2 times x to the half gives me minus 2x to the half. Minus 2 times 3 gives me minus 6. That gives me my final answer, x plus x to the power of half minus 6. Let's do one more. If I've got x to the power of 2 thirds plus x to the power of a third minus 6, it can also factorize like we did over here. I put a minus 2 and a plus 3 at the back, and I put the x in the beginning here and here. If I times this x with this x, I must end up with x to the 2 over 3. So I have to add those two things in the air, and they have to be the same thing. So it's going to be x to the power of a third and x to the power of a third. If I times x to the third with x to the third, I'm going to get x to the 2 third. x to the third times 3 is plus 3x to the third. Minus 2 with this one is minus 2x to the third. Minus 2 with the 3 gives me minus 6, which is the same as this. Now we're quickly going to solve four equations. The heading says solve for x. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to factorize this. The first thing we do is we write two sets of brackets. Put the x and the x in the beginning, a minus 2 and the plus 3 at the back. And then we have to put something in the area so that if I times this x with this x and add these two things that should be the same, It'll add up to be a 1. And that'll be a half and a half. Then we'll do these two parts separately. I rewrote this. Got x square of half equals 2 by moving the minus 2 over, and that's where this came from. Or I took this guy, rewrote it, took the plus 3 to the other side, so x square of half equals to minus 3, which we got over here. Then I simplify further. To get rid of that half, I can't, the sum does not have a solution, so it's not applicable. Because x to the half is the same as having a square root of x, and a square root can't have a negative answer, so there is no answer on this side. This you don't have to write down. And on this side, to get rid of that half, you times by 2 over 1 in the air on both sides. That's why x equals 2 to the power of 2. That means x equals to 4. Please look at the video, Restrictions on Exponents, to understand this part. Here is a different equation that we have to solve. First, we're going to factorize both sides. First, we're going to make two sets of brackets. I'm going to put a plus 9 and a minus 3 at the back to get to minus 27. 
and to a plus 6 over here. Then we need a value in the air, there and there, that if I times the 3 with the 3, I'm going to get 3 to the power of 2x, and that will be x and x. If I times this 3 to the x times 3 to the x, I'm going to get 3 to the 2x. 3 to the x times minus 3 is minus 3 times 3 to the x. Plus 9 times 3 to the x is plus 9 times 3 to the x. And a plus 9 times minus 3 is minus 27. That will get us back to what we had. I'm going to work out the two brackets separately. We're going to say 3 to the x plus 9 equals 0. Or 3 to the x minus 3 equals 0. Then on this side... That will give me 3 to the x equals to 3 to the power of 1. And that, because the bases are the same, x equals to 1. That's my answer here. On this side, I'll take the plus 9 over. It becomes minus 9. And that is not applicable, because 3 to the power of anything can never give me a negative answer. Again, restrictions on exponents. Here is our next equation that we must solve. So we've got an x to the half, x to the quarter, and then minus 2 equals to 0. In this case, again, we will break it up into two brackets. We put an x over here, an x over here, and a minus 1 and a plus 2 at the back. We need to find out what the values in the air must be to get me back to x to the power of a half if I times this x with this x. And that will be x to the power of a quarter and x to the power of a quarter. I haven't said this earlier, but it's usually the number that we see over there in the air that we're going to use here and here. But you must understand, it's no use saying that to you. Now we'll have two solutions coming out of here, one on each side. I'll make this equal to 0 and take the 1 over. Make this equal to 0 and take the 2 over. Which will then get x to the power of a quarter equals to 1. x to the power of a quarter equals to minus 2. Then this side will give us no answer. It's not applicable. Because we have an even root. And any even root can't have a negative answer. Restrictions of exponents. You can also just write x to the power of a quarter is not allowed to be minus 2. Now to the other side. To get rid of that quarter in the air, we're going to times by 4 over 1 with that quarter. And in the air here, we're going to times by 4 over 1. And our final answer will be x equals to 1. This is our last equation. It says solve for x. In this case, it's not a trinomial, so you should do the following. First, write a 9 as a product of its prime factors. That will make it 3 squared. That makes it 3 to the power of 2x. Break up this term over here becomes 3 to the x times 3 to the minus 2. Now we can take out the common factor in here and here. We write the 3 to the power of x with the bracket. You say 3 to the x times what will give me 3 to the 2x and that will be 3 to the power of x. 3 to the x times 3 to the x will give me 3 to the power of 2x because I add the exponents. What do I times 3 to the x over here to get this term? That will be minus 3 to the minus 2 and close the bracket. Then we'll break the sum up into 2 again. 3 to the x equals to 0, or this part equals to 0. On this side, we'll then get 3 to the x equals to 3 to the minus 2, if you brought this over. This answer here is then not applicable, because 3 to the power of anything can never give us a 0. And on this side, because the bases are the same, x equals to minus 2, and that's our final answer. Please indicate whether you liked or disliked the video, and subscribe to the channel.